Hi, I'm Stephanie Yu, and here's Australia, halfway around the world from us. We're going to be visiting Australia today. Well, actually, David will be visiting. David found out that there's some very interesting animals there because of the way Australia was formed millions and millions of years ago. When you think of Australia, you think of unusual animals, right? Animals like the kangaroo, the platypus, and the koala. But did you ever wonder how it happens that those animals live only in Australia and nowhere else in the world? Well, there are a few reasons. Australia is a continent, a large mass of land, but it's surrounded by water, so it's also an island. Australia is an island continent. And that means that the animals that live there can't get off. And animals that don't live there can't get on. But Australia wasn't always set off from the rest of the world. Millions and millions and millions of years ago, about 150 million years ago, when dinosaurs were still around, Australia was connected to Africa, South America, Antarctica, India, and Australia fit in right about here. What was this huge continent called? It wasn't called anything because there weren't any people around. People weren't even invented yet. But today, scientists call it Gondwana land, an ancient continent. Gondwana land. About 150 million years ago, Gondwana land started to break up in pieces. The first piece of land to separate slowly drifted to the northeast and became the continent we know today as Africa. The next piece of land to split off was India. It drifted north until it collided with Asia. Many millions of years later, South America, Australia, and Antarctica went their separate ways. And the continents are still moving today at a rate of a few centimeters a year. Where will they be in another 50 million years? Wait and see. A giant flightless bird once roamed Gondwana land. As the continents drifted to different locations, animals all over the world were adapting to their new environments. This giant bird evolved into the three large birds that live on different continents today. The emu of Australia, the rhea of South America, and the ostrich of Africa. Even after the big split, all the continents except Australia remained connected to each other in some way for a time. So animals living everywhere but Australia were free to move from continent to continent. Meanwhile, Australian animals, isolated from the rest of the world, evolved in their own special ways. Here's a quiz. A marsupial is a, a kind of marshmallow soup. B, a small zoo found on the planet Mars. C, an animal group found in Australia. The answer is C, an animal group found in Australia. Marsupials, not a kind of soup, a kind of mammal. It's easy to recognize a marsupial. Almost all of them have pouches, which are used to carry around young marsupials, like a built-in backpack, except it's a front pack. Okay, David, these are red kangaroos. You can see the large orangey-coloured ones are the male kangaroos. And these ones just in front here, the grey-coloured ones are the females. Mm -hmm. They'd have the pouches, right? That's right, yeah. Only the females have pouches. A lot of people get confused when you say marsupial. They think all of the kangaroos have pouches, but only the females and the pouches are for the developing young to develop in. Yeah, they're called joeys, right? That when they're in the 
That's right, yeah. The young ones are called joeys. Now, when do they leave the pouch? They leave the pouch for the first time when they're about six, seven months old. And they go in and out of the pouch till they're about nine months old. Then after nine months, they're still dependent on the mother. They have to drink milk from the pouch, so they put their head into the pouch and drink from the mother. But they're too big to get into the pouch and she'll stop them getting back in. And, but they'll still stay with her till they're about 12 months old. They seem to be walking too. They, they don't walk the hump, right? No, they can walk as well. When they're going slowly, you can see they put their front paws down and their tail down. They put all the weight on the tail and the front paws and bring those heavy hind legs forward. And then when they get the hind legs on the ground, they can then move forward again on their front paws. But it looks like they move all four at the same time. I mean, they move the two front and then the two back. That's right. They, they don't have... use them independently. No, they can't. They can't. And if they, they find it very difficult to move backwards. They'll sit back on their tail, but they can't move in reverse. To balance themselves. That's right, yeah. How long have they been around? For millions of years. <laughs> Big feet. And only in Australia. are unusual, wait till you see the monotremes, the only mammals that lay eggs instead of having live babies. My favorite monotreme, the platypus. The platypus, a rare and strange animal. It has a broad tail, like a beaver, a bill and webbed feet, like a duck, and fur, like a cat. The platypus is so unusual that when early explorers who came to Australia went back home and described it, no one believed them. Today, scientists work to protect this special mammal. It's late afternoon, and Michelle and I are on the Murrumbidgee River with Keith Williams and Terry Rutso wildlife biologists who study these animals and check them regularly. But to study a platypus, you have to find one. Back up. Oh, I get it. Right up. Take it back. What? Yep. How long is it there? It's about uh, 30 meters. The platypus has been around for millions of years. They only live in the fresh waters of eastern Australia, and there aren't many of them. The net is in place. Now, we wait. Eight thirty p.m. Still no sign of a platypus. We have to keep a close watch on the nets. If the corks begin to move, we'll know we've caught something. A 
11 p.m. Finally, we caught one. There we go. It's got to be there. Okay, got it. Oh, it's chill. I got it. David, right? Good. Here, bring that bucket up. That's it. It's definitely a platypus. Watch out, be careful. Those are the poisonous ones, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, here we go. Oh. Look at him. There he goes. <laughs> now we have our platypus. We'll put him back soon, but we have to wait till daylight to examine him. Sunrise the next morning. The cows are awake. And so is the platypus. Can it breathe underwater? No, it can't. It's an air-breathing mammal. Um, and it uh, can only stay underwater for about a minute to a minute and a half. Uh, and in that time, it has to gather its food and uh, it puts it into the cheek pouches and comes to the surface, rests on the surface and uh, grinds it up. The bill itself is, got, is very sensitive. And it's got hundreds of uh, nerve endings on the, on the bill itself and particularly mm -hmm around this front margin. Why is that? And, uh, well, it's so that it can pick up its food source, uh, know where it is when it gets underwater. It goes down underwater and it swoops from side to side like that along the bottom. And uh, it doesn't actually have to contact its food. What it does is it uh, gets nearby and it picks up the electrical impulses uh, generated by the, by the prey items. Gosh. And it can s and snap them up and... Like uh, a little radar yeah, system. that's right. And it tucks it, it tucks it into the cheek pouches, <laughs> comes up to the <laughs> surface, rests on the surface and chews it up and swallows it. How do, how do they move around? Well, they walk, well, they walk around uh, on land, particularly on the front feet there, they just tuck, the, tuck their uh, the webs back and, and run along. But in the water, um, they rest on the surface, they say, when they're eat, feeding, and then they dive, and they swim with the front feet, which is Ooh. pretty unusual for uh, aquatic mammals. It's the only aquatic mammal, in fact, uh, that swims using its front feet. All the others use their hind feet. It, it really looks like a whole bunch of different animals. It's got it's got fur like uh, a cat. I don't know. <laughs> it's got a uh, um, webbed feet like like a duck, and it's the back of it looks like, like a beaver. Superficially, that's true, but it's really it's very 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 much a platypus. It's uh, it it has this very thick insulating fur, uh, which is essential for uh, a mammal that lives in the water. Uh, spends you know, up, up to seventy percent of its time in the water. And um, its tail certainly isn't like a, that of a beaver. Uh, a beaver uses its tail for swimming and for other functions. The um, platypus's tail is really just more like a, a rudder, and just as the back feet are, use them to steer a bit. And also, as it's important storage uh, area for storage of fat. Yeah. Pretty big. Uh... Then they put a numbered band on his leg. The band is an identification tag. Once these animals were shot and trapped for their fur, today. They're being protected. It was time to let him go, but Keith and Terry would be checking on him again. Bye, mate. <laughs> See you later. Australia, home of some very unusual animals. Because Australia became isolated millions of years ago, there are animals that live only in Australia, like koalas, kangaroos, and platypuses, all unusual animals, all only in Australia. Three to One Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television